हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो वी गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू यर लास्ट टॉपिक दैट इज डेटा प्रेजेंटेशन ग्राफिकल वे इन अ ग्राफिकल वे सो टुडे वी गोइंग टू सी हाउ टू प्लॉट अ ओजाइव कव नाउ फॉर ओजाइव कव वी हैव अ लेस दैन क्यूमुलेटिव ग्राफ एंड मोर दैन क्यूमुलेटिव ग्राफ और यू कैन से लेस दैन ओजाइव कव और अ मोर दैन ओजाइव कव For your less than ojive curve and more than ojive curve, we need to find the less than cumulative frequency as well as more than cumulative frequency. We have seen those part in your theory session. Okay, so today we are going to see how we can plot the ojive curve in R. So here the question is given the following frequency distribution relate uh, relates to lives of the four hundred light bulbs. Draw less than and more than type of ojive curve. Okay, so the life of bulbs is given in a hours. So your uh, data is started with like six hundred to six hundred ninety nine, seven hundred to seven hundred ninety nine, eight hundred to eight hundred ninety nine, nine hundred to nine hundred ninety nine, thousand to thousand ninety nine. Okay, so you are able to see that, and we have a respective frequency that is the number of bulbs. So you are able to see that these classes are not in a continuous fashion. Okay, so first we need to make them continuous. So how are you going to make the make them continuous using your class boundaries? Okay, so how to find the class boundaries? We have discussed that in a theory session. So your frequencies are like what? Eighty five, seventy seven, one, two, four, seventy eight, and thirty six. So we are going to read this frequency or we are going to write this frequency in a R. Okay. In your f variable, so this is your f variable. Okay, this is your f variable, and we are going to store the all the frequency in this f variable. So c using c function, we are going to accept the values in a f. So zero, eighty five, seventy seven, one, twenty four, seventy eight, thirty six, and zero. So in R, you are able to see that I have intentionally added zeros before and after the uh, your frequency. So then we are going to print that frequency. We will see the output of these two lines. So we have uh, stored all the frequencies in a F successfully. Now L C stand for your less than cumulative frequency. L C stand for what? Your less than cumulative frequency because for ojai curve we need that frequency, right? So we your R has an inbuilt function called cum sum, which is going to return you the less than cumulative frequency. So cum sum, and then we're going to pass the f variable. So cum sum f, and then we're going to print that LC. Okay. So let me execute these two lines. So this is the less than cumulative uh, frequency you are able to see. So we'll count it. Okay. So zero as it is. Zero plus eighty five, eighty five, eighty five plus seventy seven, one sixty two, one sixty two plus one twenty four, two eighty six, two eighty six plus seventy eight, three sixty four, three sixty four plus thirty six, four hundred, four hundred plus zero, four hundred. This is what your less than cumulative frequency. How we found less than cumulative frequency using our inbuilt function. That is what your cum sum function. Then we need to find the up more than cumulative frequency over here. We represent that more than cumulative frequency using U C variable. Okay, so U C stand for your upper cumulative frequency. You can see. Okay, in U C first we stored what uh, the sequence of one one till seven, right? So this is. Let me print this U C for you. So you are able to see that in U C we stored what a number from one to seven. So this is the output of your U C one two three four five six seven. Okay. After that, so for U C you don't have a function inbuilt function in R to find your more than cumulative frequency. So that's why we are going to uh, write a user defined code. So here we are going to using uh, use the for loop. Now in programming for loop is used for iteration purpose. Okay, suppose you want to write suppose a specific line ten number of times. At that time you are going to use that for loop to reduce the line of code. 
okay so here we are going to use your for loop so let me explain you how this for loop is going to execute so here you are able to see that we have your for loop over here so in uc we have stored what the values from 1 to 7 you see we have stored the values from 1 to 7 okay so you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 your for loop iterating which value i value right and i in 7 till 1 so 7 is what the starting value and 1 is what your ending value means your for loop is going to iterate seven times how many times seven times each time your i value is going to change okay so initially your for loop will start from seven okay for the first iteration your i value will be what seven okay so then you'll come inside what your for loop okay so it says what you see i means what you see seven now whatever you're going to write in a square bracket that is going to indicate the index value okay you see is going to indicate the uh, your index value so whatever you're going to store it is will get stored where in the seventh position of your uc okay so we have the sum function so our R has an inbuilt function called sum which is going to add the numbers. Okay. Sum means what? Addition. So, addition of what? F. Okay. Addition of what? F. And F is iterating from what? 7 till I. F is iterating what? 7 till I. Okay. So, F 7 colon. What is the value of I? 7. So, it will perform the addition of F7 plus F7. So, we know that in F7, we stored the values as what? 0. So, 0 plus 0, 0. So, on the 7th position of UC, 0 will get stored. Okay. Then again, your for loop will get iterate. So, it will start what? Your second iteration. For the second iteration, your I value will be what? Your I value will be become 6 okay now whatever you're going to write it will get where stored in a sixth position of your uc means at this position okay so on a sixth position what it will going to see it will going to sum what the f value okay 7 till now what is for the second iteration what is the value of i 6 so 7 till 6 so it is going to perform like seven, f of 7 plus f of 6 okay so the at 0th position at the 0th position you have what your 0 value and But on the sixth position you have the next value so it is going to add zero plus your next value uh, that is 36 i guess so 36 0 plus 36 36 so that's a 36 will get stored where in the sixth position of your uc same way it will iterate till seventh position okay so same way it is going to fill the values at fifth position fourth third second and first likewise you're going to find the value of what your uc after that, we are going to see the execution of your next. Okay. Now we found we are going to find your UC vector. So, 
you are able to see that at the first position 400 is stored at the sixth uh, sorry at the first position 400 is sold second 400 third 135 uh, your last no next number is three two three eight likewise you're going to find your upper cum upper cumulative frequency now next what you're going to find you're going to find the your lower class boundary and the upper class boundary so your classes are being started with what your classes are started with 600 uh, to 699 so the it is going to consider the previous class also because in frequency we started your frequency with what zero so 500 till 599 so what will be the uh, lower class uh, class boundary for the first class the lower boundary for the first class will be 499.5 okay and the, uh, for the last class the lower boundary will be what 1199.5 right so this is the sorry uh, 1099.5 so this is what the lower class boundary for your classes okay i'm going to execute the again we used what sequence function to create a sequence same way we're going to find the upper class boundary for the classes so this is a vector for your upper class boundary so your upper class boundary started with what find 199.5 till 11,000 sorry 1199.5 and it is incremented by what 100 so we're going to print that also okay so you remember that your upper class sorry your less than cumulative graph is plotted against what upper class boundary so the plot is a function to plot the line graph uh, for your graphical presentation okay so the plot is a function to plot function we're going to pass some parameters so first we're going to plot what less than cumulative frequency so for the less than cumulative frequency we need upper class boundary so your upper class boundary is stored in a ubx okay then we're going to pass your less than cumulative frequency that is what that is stored in a lc variable okay then we have a type your type is what l okay so l means what it is going to represent a straight line actually okay then you have your x limits x label y label and the main which we have discussed for the histogram also and lwd means what your width of the line okay it is what two okay so i'm going to execute these two lines so you'll be able to see this is what your less than ojive curve right after that we need a more than ojive curve also so line is a function which is going to plot uh, more than cumulative uh, curve for you okay so for the line uh, we're going to pass what your lower class boundary and the upper class boundary okay lty uh, lty is what line type again so two means what it is going to plot a dash dash line and again the width of this line is what two okay that is what a thickness for the line so you will be able to see that this is a less than cumulative curve for you okay one means what your solid line and two means what your dashed line i hope you understood the ojive curve thank you